All right, we're going to stay in London and we're going to speak with government house leader Karina Gould, who joins me now. Minister Gould, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. So you, you've seen the numbers, you've seen the polls, you've heard the grumblings uh, inside your party uh, from your own MPs. I mean, what does your party, your government, your cabinet need to do to turn things around? Well, look, I mean, here we are at National Caucus, which is, you know, a gathering of members of parliament from across the country to talk about what they've heard uh, from constituents over the summer. That's exactly why we're gathering, to make sure that we're having these conversations before the House returns next week. Um, look, you know, polls are important, uh, but summer polls, I think we need to take with a bit of a grain of salt. You know, not everybody is paying attention. Uh, you know, I've certainly been out in my community and out across the country over the summer. Summer. And while I've heard grumblings, I've also heard a lot of positive support as well. So, you know, I think we need to listen to the very real issues that Canadians are facing right now and return to Ottawa next week with some real solutions in hand. But, you know, we're well over a year and so several months into the, the spike in inflation, into the cost of living issues. The housing affordability has been a challenge in a lot of the key areas for quite some time. Why has it taken until now to sort of get an acute focus on some of these issues? Well, I would say that we have been focused on these issues. I mean, if you look at some of the measures we brought in last year in the fall economic statement, I mean, we brought in the Canada housing benefit to help low-income renters, knowing that housing was a challenge, particularly for low-income renters. Uh, we doubled the GST tax credit last year during the fall economic statement, again, to help you know low- and moderate-income Canadians. We brought in the grocery rebate, uh, in the last uh, budget. So we have been focused on affordability issues. I mean, uh, one of my colleagues in the segment earlier talked about childcare. My goodness, I, until about a month ago, I was the Minister of Families and I had the opportunity to travel across the country and hearing the stories of how reducing fees, in many cases by up to 50%, in some cases down to $10 a day, has had a dramatic impact on the budgets of families. You know, these are all things that we have been doing, um, but we know that there's more to do and we know that we need to be focused um, and really help Canadians. Like, the whole world right now is going through this affordability crisis. Canadians are not immune. We've put some measures in place and, you know, over the next couple of days we're going to talk about what else we need to do because we've been the government that's been there for Canadians. We've listened to Canadians through really tough times over the last eight years and we're going to keep doing that. And look, and I appreciate your caveat on summer polling and, and this is potentially up to two years before the next election, but there is a shift in the mood of the country and Pierre Polyev has a message that is resonating and I know you take exception with the underlying facts of his message, but people are responding to it in a way they don't seem to be responding to the governments anymore despite those measures you just outlined. Why do you think he's getting traction and you're struggling? Well, you know, I think anytime there's a new leader in a party, people kick the tires a little bit. And, and I think it's important for them to hold the current government to account as well. I think Canadians know that, you know, whether it was through the renegotiation of NAFTA, whether it was through the COVID-19 pandemic, whether it's been through the inflation challenges, we've, we've been there for Canadians. But that doesn't mean that Canadians shouldn't kind of, you know, check out what else is on offer. Um, but it's up to us, you know, as Liberals, as the governing party, to continue to earn the trust of Canadians. And so, you know, I think the fact that MPs have been out in their communities, that ministers have been traveling around the country this summer, we've heard Canadians, and now we're going to demonstrate that not only have we heard them, we're listening and we're also acting. What, what about listening to the caucus, though, Minister? Several MPs told my colleague Olivia Stefanovic uh, ahead of the caucus meeting they don't feel the Prime Minister listens to their views or solicits their advice. We've seen similar reporting by our colleague Althea Raj in the Toronto Star. Is the Prime Minister out of touch with his caucus? Well, look, I think the Prime Minister takes those, um, you know, those comments very, very seriously. I know in conversations that, you know, we had at the Cabinet retreat that this is something that is really important to him. Um, you know, our caucus is, is the most important that we have. We, we don't form government without a strong um, and, you know, large Liberal caucus. And so he takes this very seriously. Um, and this caucus retreat, this National Caucus retreat, is a really important opportunity to listen to MPs. I know in my new role as government house leader, that's something that I'm going to emphasize, having that open door policy and really making sure that we're taking their voices, their concerns and their considerations uh, seriously.
So you talk about listening to Canadians and listening to the caucus, but uh, I wonder, are you worried if Canadians are, are willing to listen to you at this point? I mean, it is eight years in. Uh, according to some polling from Leger, which is usually one of the most accurate pollsters in the country, 59% of Canadians say they're dissatisfied or very dissatisfied with a government led by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. I mean, are, are we nearing a point where maybe the Prime Minister has become a liability for your party? No, I think he's still the main asset that we have. Um, but what I do think is that you're right, it has been eight years. Um, you know, it's up to us as a government, it's up to us as a party to continue to do that engagement with Canadians. You know, I know that this is a tough time for Canadians right now. I mean, when you talk about housing prices, when you talk about groceries, like Canadians have gone through a really difficult time, particularly over the last four years. I mean, we just went through the worst global pandemic in any of our living memories, right? Uh, really in over a hundred years. That's compounded by supply chain issues, by the illegal war in Ukraine that has further sent food and fuel prices soaring around the world, compounded by the rising cost of housing, like these are serious times and serious times need a serious leader and they need a serious government. And I think, you know, when Canadians put what we've done as the Liberal government and they juxtapose that with what the Conservatives have even suggested either during the pandemic or recently, they'll realize that, you know, there is a, a, a better option and I do still believe that that is us as the Liberal Party. But, you know, we have to continue to engage and listen to Canadians and demonstrate to them why we deserve to continue to be in government. So, so if the confidence and supply agreement holds and, and you continue to be in government, for you have about two years left uh, on that agreement. But when you look at the issues that are causing problems for the government right now, cost of living, inflation, which has proven sticky, housing supply and housing costs, which has proven difficult to solve, how challenging is it for a federal government to make meaningful progress on housing in particular in time for Canadians to feel the relief before the next election cycle? Well, look, I think that's a really, really fair question. And, you know, Canada isn't alone in terms of housing challenges. I mean, we're seeing this in the United States, we're seeing it in Europe, we're seeing it in Australia and New Zealand. And this is something that's happening right around the world. But that being said, you know, since we came into office in 2015, we have put a focus on housing. We understand we need to do more, and I think our job is to show Canadians what the path forward is and how we're going to get out of this housing crisis that we're currently in. I mean, when it comes to inflation, you know, the Bank of Canada has made some very serious moves, um, which have been challenging for Canadians, but they have been able to bring inflation down. Um, but, you know, we're going to have to keep working on that and keep listening to Canadians. So you're right, this is a challenge, but I think what we've demonstrated as a federal government is that we've always been willing to work with partners, be that at the provincial level, be that at the municipal level, and across party lines. And so, you know, when it comes to the supply and confidence agreement, I mean, we've put forward some really important measures like dental care, which is also going to have a huge impact on the bottom lines of low and moderate income Canadians. So we're going to keep working in partnership because this isn't something the federal government can do alone, but we can certainly play and will continue to play a leadership role.